Okay, so before we start the experiment, let's look at what we're doing. Every time I do an experiment, I like to draw out a schematic. In this one, I actually got some of the information from this one here. So they look very similar. So today we are starting out with an evaporation disc full of a mixture comprised of silicon dioxide, sodium chloride, and calcium carbonate. So there's unknown amounts of each of these within this mixture, and we're going to play off of the characteristics of each of these to be able to separate them. So the first thing we're going to do is add some DI water to our evaporating dish. We're then going to decant, which means to pour off the liquid portion. And we're going to decant into a pre-weighed beaker. And in that beaker is going to be our aqueous sodium chloride. Then we're going to evaporate the water out of that and be able to weigh the amount of sodium chloride that we recovered. So back to the decantation, we have a residual solid of silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate. So in order to separate these two, we're gonna add three molar hydrochloric acid and then do another decantation. And our supernatant is going into beaker B and the residual solid is just the silicon dioxide. In that silicon dioxide, we are going to dry over boiling water and that's pretty much it. Once that's dried, we can weigh out the sand. And then back to beaker B, we're going to get that up to boiling, remove that from heat and add one molar sodium carbonate. Stir for about two to three minutes, do a gravity filtration. The filtrate, the liquid portion is gonna be waste. And then the solid residue is going to be our calcium carbonate. We're going to transfer that onto a dry wash glass and we're going to dry that further and weigh out the sample. Okay, on to the experiment. So the first step is isolating the sodium chloride. I've weighed out the mass of the evaporating dish and the mass of the unknown mixture that I obtained. I've got about 15 milliliters of DI water and I'm gonna put it in the evaporating dish and I'll stir for just a couple minutes. All right, and now I'm ready to pour off that supernatant into a pre-weighed beaker. And there's some of those definitions for you guys up at the top. Okay, and so what's left in the evaporating dish is silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate. And then we have the aqueous sodium chloride solution in the beaker. Now time to boil that and evaporate the water and isolate the sodium chloride. So part B, isolating the sand, I'm pouring in some hydrochloric acid into the evaporating dish and I'm stirring until no more gas evolves. decanting again. It's one of our methods of physical separation. And I'm going to transfer both of these over to our hot plate. I'm going to dry off the sand and then heat the beaker to boiling. And then once I've removed that from the heat, I'm stirring in some sodium carbonate and I'll be stirring for a couple minutes. This is a good time to think about what reaction is occurring here. So I'm setting up a filtration next and I think the easiest way is just to fold the filter paper in quarters and open through one of the first flaps and just to create a little cone. And then you stick it right in the funnel. And I like to spray it with a little bit of water just to get it to adhere to the funnel. And we're good to go. So the contents of Beaker B 
going to filter through gravity filtration, another method of our physical separation. And this will take quite a while, so I won't bore you with the whole process. All right, and once that's completed, you're gonna carefully transfer the filter paper onto a watch glass and just dry out that filter paper. So there's our dried sand and I'm going to weigh that out. And our sodium chloride sample. And lastly, the calcium carbonate plus the filter paper. And there we go, everything has been separated. And here's a look at my data sheet if you're interested in that information. And thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.